Hello everybody, this is Mr. Lu. A very good uh, day to everybody. Now, today I want to share with everybody that I have a amazing growth uh, in my S&P 500 account that I didn't realize because I haven't looked at it uh, for a long time. Uh, but this is a big milestone to me. Uh, I have actually have my uh, my Endowers account, okay? And uh, my Endowers account is mainly my CPF account and a bit of SRS. Uh, it has just a uh, uh, breach a uh, high of uh, $200,000 in uh, in profits, okay? Uh, and to be precise, it's about 31%. Um, so today, my uh, my my S&P 500 account in uh, my Endowers uh, has already hit a high of uh, $85,400, okay? So uh, that's, a, that's a big milestone. And I would like to share with everybody the secret behind it, okay? And... And the secret behind it ain't that big a deal, okay? That big deal is uh, not very difficult uh, uh, to learn. Uh, it, it's probably difficult to master, but let me give you the the art behind, okay? So uh, behind it actually is actually just a very a two very simple principle. Two very simple principle. The first principle is called uh, crash buying, okay? Crash buying. So I, I literally love to wait for a crash and when a crash come, I buy. Now, some of y'all have actually seen it, uh, seen how I actually did it during uh, the, the 2022 crash. And uh, I've actually demonstrated it almost day by day, uh, uh, blow by blow, how I actually executed it. Okay. And for those people who had, uh, who had mastered the skill or followed the skill, you no, know, good for you. Those who don't have, it doesn't matter. Okay. There's always another crash that's coming. I, I can promise you that uh, a crash will come. I just don't know when. Okay. Uh, and on this note, uh, uh, me and uh, Benjamin, uh, my son, is uh, developing a, a, a set of uh, crash indicator by studying all the past crashes, uh, all the past crashes uh, up to 1973, okay, uh, till now. So there are a total of probably about 10 over crashes and we will go through with you uh, episode by episode and the key learnings behind them so that when a crash comes, you know, you could hopefully even identify before it happened or the signals that need to happen. That part is very difficult, I admit. But more possible is to catch the, the crash near the bottom. And that part I've successfully executed six times. So I've actually developed uh, some, uh, some, some skills. So I've, now fortunately, Ben has uh, some time now, he's uh, going to come out of army. So uh, we are actually uh, producing a set of, uh, of tutorials uh, and, uh, and, and lectures in that sense uh, that I can cover uh, with you guys, okay? So if you would uh, like to learn more about this uh, crash buying uh, Kung Fu, uh, just do click follow and make sure your personalization is set up to a highest alert and then click a like uh, for every of my video, okay? Um, and do join us in our Telegram group where I'll publish more and more of this uh, kind of uh, uh, video uh, uh, alerts. And more importantly, uh, this is where in uh, my Telegram channel called uh, Lu1M65, Lu1M65, uh, you will actually have a lot of community experts far smarter than I am uh, coaching you uh, and giving you all the advice. You know, we have got really a, a very, very committed uh, community experts that give out of their heart. They do not collect a single cent. There is no, okay, there is no financial or, or, or personal interest involved really all out to, to serve the community. And then I'd like to give them <laughs> applause uh, for this, right? You know, to all my community experts, you are just wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for serving uh, the community, okay? So, um, so, so the first one is crash buying and I'll, I'll go through, it's a Kung Fu that needs some time to learn, but I, I will, I will go through, uh, some, some session on it. Uh, but the second thing, uh, is a art that is, uh, that's, that we talk a lot about, but, uh, I think some of y'all cannot catch it. Okay. And the art is called compounding, compounding. Um, so basically, uh, my, my, my endowers account is basically a, he executed since uh, 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 2020, where I first fired my shots, and then uh, at a bigger amount in 2022, I fired it. So, so time has allowed it to kind of grow. Okay, and this this growth is called compounding. But someone say, "Hey, Mr. Lu, I thought only things that had dividends compound." Right? There's a huge, uh, huge uh, 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 myth. Okay, there is actually two types of compounding. 
And I would like to give credit to one of our biggest community expert. Okay, not the only one, but one of the biggest one. Uh, his name is Chun Hui. Very smart gentleman. Okay, uh, he's a Stanford graduate as well, uh, and he's really very very smart. Uh, much smarter than me. Uh, and he 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 actually contributes quite uh, actively in uh, in the one M six five community. And he actually has an article. I'll I'll post up the link uh, in uh, in the description. But he well described in his article what compounding is, and I'll give a summary uh, of, uh, of basically his, uh, his teaching, okay? So essentially, there are two types of compounding. One is compound interest. The other one is compound growth, okay? They're, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are superficially the same and fundamentally different, okay? Superficially the same and fundamentally different. So compound interest, the compounding power comes from uh, interest growth. So uh, to understand how power compounding works, uh, let's say in your case of your CPF SA, right? So it use a 4% return. Let's say you're 30 years old right now, you retire at 65 years old and you start drawing out, you want to know how much you have. So you actually use a, use a financial calculator, you put a 1.04 and then you put a to the power of 35, right? And it gives you a, a bit small here, 3.9, okay, about four, about four times. So you put every $100,000 to put inside, you will multiply by four times, right? So about 30 years so yeah, it's uh, possible to accumulate $100,000 uh, in your CPF. And, and that will give you 400,000, right? So if you, you know, uh, accumulate 200,000 and you accumulate over the years, right? You become maybe 800,000. So basically you get what I mean. So that's uh, that's that's basically like a, like an interest that uh, that's reinvested, okay? So that's a compounding, uh, that's compounding of interest, right? That's compound interest. And most people I, uh, that, I, that I come across uh, actually understand compound interest. So compound interest is not difficult to understand. The one that a lot of people have problem trying to understand is a uh, compound growth, okay? Compound growth. And what's compound growth? Compound growth is something like S&P 500, right? S&P 500 grows on average between 8 to 12%. Now, it doesn't mean that every year you grow 8 to 12%. What happens is it go some years you even go negative, some years go positive, but on average you, you divide uh, over a, a period of 5, 10, 20, 30 years, re generally it grows by an average of 8 to 12 percent. And that's where then you can apply the same uh, formula, okay, uh, and, and uh, you use a, a scientific calculator, okay, a scientific calculator, uh, and, and, uh, and do this. Let's say, let's take a number, right, in between. In between, uh, uh, in between, uh, eight percent and twelve percent, that's that's about ten percent, right? So you do is, uh, you put one point one zero, okay? One point one zero is is ten percent, okay? And you put to the power of, let's say, uh, you know, in my case, I right now I'm about fifty one years old. I'm going to be retiring at let's say seven, let's say six, uh, seventy years old. Uh. That's probably what I think I was, I'll stop working. So I've got about uh, nineteen years, right? So the power of nineteen years, okay? It comes out about six point one times, six point one time. Okay, so uh, how much will my how much will my endowment account grow by uh, to when I'm seventy years old? Okay, so that's about uh, uh about six point uh, wait a minute. Okay, it's about six point one times times about eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, let me try, and this becomes about about five million dollars. Okay, five million dollars. It's not bad, right? It's not bad. Okay, and of course. Could it grow higher? Yes. Remember, I said it grow lower as well and higher. So it could, you know, it could grow to about six or seven million. I think let's uh, do a calculation, shall we? Um, so, so let's say, uh, you know, it, it grows, uh, you know, one point one two. There's a higher limit, one point two to the power of nineteen years. Okay. Oh, that's a big number. So it's eight point six. Okay, eight point six times. And if we take uh, eight point six times, uh, multiply by. Uh, my eight hundred fifty thousand dollars right now. Okay, what does it become? So it become seven point three million. Okay, seven point three million. But what if you know it, it goes on the lower limit of a uh, uh, lower limit of eight uh, percent, right? So it's one point zero eight uh, to the power of uh, nineteen years. Okay, and then multiply by eight hundred fifty thousand. Okay, it basically becomes about three point seven million. Okay, three point seven million. So not bad because my my SA and my MA, you know, would have a, would have a reasonably large amount as well. So com combined together, I think one person will be 
at least have about just for my endowers and my CPF account, uh, at least I'll see about a uh, half a million. Uh, yeah, close to no, close to uh four to five million dollars, right? So not bad. On the high side, you can go to seven to eight million dollars. This is just on my endowers and CPF, and generally they are all CPF uh, because uh, you know, I do have a bit of uh, of SRS there, but that generally CPF. So it's a uh, so so this is how how compounding works uh, on. Uh, on uh, compounding works on the uh, on uh, on compound growth, so you don't need uh, you don't need to have an interest uh, or dividend, okay? And a lot of people say, hey, hey you know, I I I I I I actually only recognize a compound when there's a dividend. No, okay, the growth itself uh, actually compounds on itself, okay? So uh, this is where I I'll define, okay. Uh, the compounding, uh, compounding on an asset is now ach uh, uh, achieved not through uh, interest but through growth of the asset value. Okay, this is also called compounding, and uh, compounding is the eighth wonder of the world. Okay, uh, compounding graph grows like this. Okay, um, and you will feel that that phenomenal jump as the years go and later. Yeah, so in the initial years, you go very flat, see, see, yeah. And after that, it goes up like that. So, um, and and to achieve uh, compounding, uh, you need a, a few factors. Number one, that you need an asset that grows, uh, that grows, uh, you know, with a reasonable gr uh, rate of growth. Okay. And the second thing is you need um, time. There's a third factor I'm come to coming to. You, okay, you need time. Okay. So uh, when you combine a, 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 an asset that grows, okay, and you combine it with time. You basically have compounding, and the third thing you must have is what I call tahanability. Okay, this is an English word that I invented called tahanability. So these are you know these are people these are this is a trait that investors must have uh, when it comes to investing on assets. You must be able to hold for a long time without touching it, and it's very difficult for assets that have high liquidity. For a person not be tempted by the profits to not to touch it. Okay, so it's very difficult. I recognize that, and there are there there is a uh, there there are people in the that the, the, my Telegram channel that basically says that this looks good on paper but difficult to execute. Okay, well, not bad. I've already executed quite a bit of it, okay? and I'll continue to execute it. But I'm a person with strong tahanability. I see profits, I see losses. I don't care. I hold on to it and let it just glide. I successfully successfully done it so far for the last uh, twenty years, and I think I'll I'll still continue to do it for for the next twenty years. Okay, but I recognize that this trade is very very difficult, and uh, this is where I also want to say that I recognize that uh, there is a uh, there is a discovery that I found that um, that assets okay assets that uh, that most people do well okay um, in getting high. High uh, high returns at the end of the their 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 period is asset that has very high illiquidity, very highly illiquidity. So if a like like property right property property a growth rate is actually very small. Do you recognize that? It's only about two to three percent max on average. Okay, there'll be some high years like last two years because of because of COVID and things like that, it growth a bit substantial. But most of the years it growth at only two three percent. But because you hold it for a long period of time, because it's very, very difficult to sell it, okay, very, very difficult to sell, you actually uh, allow uh, compounding to take place. So imagine right now you could sell your house and move out in one day, for example, right? A lot of people will be tempted to realize the value, but selling a house take, I don't know, four months, six months, sometimes even a year, and then the, the transaction actually takes, you know, uh, three to four months. I don't know how long. You know, I think three to four months is re reasonable time. So it's very, very, very illiquid. Okay. Um. So that's why most people could achieve very good returns in property. But stock market actually have a very high growth, but yet so many people cannot achieve the high growth. Is because when they see profit, they pull out. When they see losses, they pull out. Right. So this is uh this is something that I need everybody to realize that a uh, compound growth through. A, a very liquid asset is very difficult to yield the results if you do not train yourself to have this thing called tahanability. Okay, basically means that you must be have, have the ability to hold on for a long, long period of time. And I'm talking about decades, 
not to look at it. And I've got this trade uh, because I don't often look at my stock. Uh, you know, I, I just say compound. So this is where I my last point, which is the most important point for today, is this. Your CPF is a powerful growth engine because it has high illiquidity. You can't take it out. <laughs> so because you can't take it out, there is a high tendency for us not to go and touch it and to let it compound. So uh, this is where I personally think for myself, okay, for myself, I like to use my ordinary account. Uh, the given that I've now fill up my 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 special account, I'll use my ordinary account for compounding. And I've shown you right, two hundred thousand profits over two years plus. That's not bad, right? That's not bad. And I think the compounding will continue to grow to a mega four to seven million dollars. Uh, and this this can only be achieved in assets of. Of, of high illiquidity okay, if the person uh, has, uh, has no discipline uh, to hold on for a long time. Okay? So this is an interesting insight. I'll try to give you interesting insight uh, for the day. Um, and if you really appreciate and like this video, please remember give a like and subscribe. And remember to uh, uh, join our Telegram channel. Okay? Yeah. So with this, uh, thank you. And I'll see you in a day or two. Bye-bye.